Imagine the surprise of scientists when they stumbled upon a shark graveyard. Well, it's not exactly a graveyard. These sharks seem to be preparing for the end of their lives. But no one expected to find something like this. In fact, no one even knew such a thing existed in the first place. Anyway, I really liked what we found for this video. Now, as always, there's just one thing left to do. Hey, does anybody want coffee? Who wants coffee? Okay, sorry. I've been meaning to do this for quite some time. This happened recently, in 2022, showing just how little we actually know about our oceans. By the way, don't forget to like the video if you haven't already. During an exploration of the New Cocos Islands Marine Park, scientists aboard the research vessel Investigator made a surprising discovery. Although they weren't specifically looking for a shark graveyard, they ended up finding one. The researchers were just scooping up everything they could from the ocean floor with their nets, then hauling it up to study their catch. At first, they thought they just pulled up some rocks and other uninteresting debris, but then they realized these were shark teeth, a huge number of shark teeth. Not all of the sharks that left these teeth behind were ancient fossils. For instance, they found relatively recent teeth from a mako shark and two types of relatives of the great white shark. They even found a tooth from a megalodon, or its closest ancestor. Scientists found a total of 750 teeth, which begs the question, how did all these teeth end up in one specific spot at the base of Muirfield Seamount? There are two possible explanations. The area may have unique features that cause currents to bring the teeth there, or the underwater topography traps them. Another possibility is that it's a shark graveyard, a place where sharks come to die. Hold on a sec. If we're talking about a shark graveyard, where are the rest of the shark's body parts? Surely it's not just the teeth that are left. Well, turns out that's exactly what can happen. Sharks are cartilaginous fish, meaning their skeletons are made of cartilage, not bones. Only their teeth made up of calcium phosphate are well mineralized so they can remain untouched for quite a long time. Soft shark skeletons break down really fast so there aren't any creepy underwater graveyards filled with shark bones. No ocean version of the elephant graveyard from the Lion King. That's why finding a ton of shark teeth all in one spot makes scientists think those sharks really died there. All of them. And they died naturally, without any human help. Here's what an illegal shark graveyard looks like. It's where fishermen dispose of accidentally caught predators, but it's not the same as what happens at the bottom. Let's talk about what happens when sharks get older. They're truly fascinating creatures, capable of healing from serious injuries and naturally protected against many age-related illnesses. However, nobody's immortal, not even sharks. And they sometimes do eventually die of old age. Or at least they get so old that they lose their ability to think clearly, along with their capacity to hunt. When your entire existence depends on your skill to find, capture, and eat prey, getting old can have all sorts of effects. For instance, some sharks might starve because they lose their sight. They just can't hunt properly anymore. Other sharks die from diseases caused by weakened immune systems. Also, as sharks age, they can develop various health issues and problems that might speed up their dying process. For instance, they might have to deal with digestive system troubles, skin ailments, or issues with any of their internal organs, which makes them even more vulnerable. Sharks are predators and can often get hurt while hunting or fighting with other animals. As they age, their reactions slow down and their bodies weaken, making them less successful hunters and more likely to suffer from such clashes. Let me make one thing clear. Despite scientists' best efforts, a lot about how sharks age and die remains a mystery. They live in deep waters, and studying the ocean depths is tough, expensive, and time-consuming. But based on what we know about other animal groups and what we've observed about sharks in their natural habitat, it's fair to guess that old age affects sharks much like it does other creatures. Sharks tend to handle certain illnesses in their old age better than other animals, mostly because they hit the genetic jackpot. Seriously, shark genes shield them from many age-related diseases, help them recover quickly, and even make them more resilient to cancer. In a way, cancer could also be called an age-related disease, since the risk of developing it increases in older organisms. Just compare. We humans have unstable genes, which makes our bodies more vulnerable. But sharks have been on this planet for so long and sit at the top of the food chain, so they become the epitome of perfection. Their DNA can repair itself and is more resilient to damage, which means the risk of cancer is lower. 
Sharks definitely face their fair share of evolutionary challenges. There's a common belief that if sharks stop swimming, they'll die, but that's not the case for every shark out there. Look at the tiger shark, for instance. It can breathe without moving by gulping water with its cheek muscles. But some shark species can't afford such luxury. Take the great white shark, the whale shark, and the mako shark, for instance. They don't have cheek muscles at all. Instead, they rely on obligate ram ventilation, a breathing technique that requires them to swim with their mouths open. The faster they swim, the more water passes through their gills. If they stop swimming, they stop getting oxygen, and they die. So the last thing these sharks do before they die is stop swimming. Oxygen flow stops, and, well, that's it. By the way, that's why when researchers catch sharks, like when they need to tag them, they pour water into their mouths. It comes out through their gills, and that's how the shark gets its oxygen. If you think about it, it's a pretty darn inconvenient way to breathe. Sharks don't really think about their own death like humans do, because, hey, they're wild animals. Their behavior is mostly driven by instincts and immediate survival needs, not long-term planning or awareness of mortality. Aging sharks, just like aging people, deal with similar issues. The difference is, when you're an apex predator, those things feel a bit different. And no one will take care of the apex predators. There's no shark nursing home or anything like that. If you think about it, animals don't have our versions of dying of old age, where you peacefully pass away in bed. You won't find a shark just going about its business and then suddenly dropping dead. Sharks do age, but scientists have little evidence to show that they die just from being old. It's not like they reach a peak and then it's all downhill from there, straight to the graveyard. Some species don't even seem to have this peak. They just keep growing throughout their lives until it's game over. So how do you study anything like that? The most common reason sharks die has nothing to do with their age or natural life cycle. It's excessive fishing. It's the biggest threat they face. Over 100 million sharks are killed every year, with many caught for their fins. The situation becomes more complex because of the unique traits of sharks. They grow slowly, have long gestation periods, and take quite a while to mature. You know, we often talk about invasive species that reproduce rapidly, making them practically impossible to wipe out, even with all our efforts. Sharks, on the other hand, are the total opposite. Besides catching sharks for their fins, meat, fat, liver, cartilage, skin, and even teeth, there's another big issue, bycatch. It's when sharks get accidentally caught while fishing, meaning nobody meant to catch them in the first place, they just got tangled in the nets by accident. And every year, tens of millions of sharks end up as bycatch. About 80 million sharks die each year due to fishing activities, and nearly a third of them are endangered species. Just think about that number. Making shark protection laws 10 times stricter from 2012 to 2019 didn't change a thing. Shark mortality keeps on increasing. So what really happens to sharks after they die, assuming they weren't caught by fishermen or sold off for soup? Turns out, it's pretty simple. When sharks die, their bodies sink to the ocean floor, wrapping up their life cycle by feeding scavengers, including deep sea sharks. Yeah, sharks eat each other. Nature is harsh. Unlike many other fish, sharks don't have anything keeping them from sinking after they die. They simply have negative buoyancy, unlike bony fish which have swim bladders. Sharks stay afloat because of oil in their liver, but once they're dead, without muscle control, they just sink to the ocean floor. But just dying and sinking to the bottom isn't enough to make it an actual shark graveyard. It needs to happen to a bunch of sharks in the same spot. And that actually happens. Great white sharks are usually loners, which might ease the minds of those who've seen Jaws. But for over a decade now, scientists have been keeping tabs on a spot where hundreds of these sharks gather every year. Chances are, these gatherings have been going on long before humans even noticed. Somewhere between Hawaii and Baja California and Mexico lies this spot where sharks gather for some reason every year from January until early spring. No one can quite figure out why they come or what they're up to. They act oddly, too, like diving a thousand feet down into the ocean and resurfacing every 10 minutes. White sharks have never exhibited this kind of behavior during migration, anywhere, or at any time. Scientists only learned about these strange encounters thanks to trackers, and the whole thing seems as confusing as it sounds. You'd think with sharks being so big, they'd be easy to spot, but it seems like we still know very little about them and are constantly left guessing. For instance, one could speculate that beneath this strange gathering spot of great white sharks, there might also be a graveyard, meaning at least some of the sharks swim there to die. 
It's not easy to confirm that. The graveyard we saw at the beginning of the video was really deep, around 18,000 feet under the surface. It takes some serious effort to investigate something that deep. It might seem odd to sail miles and miles with no clear goal in mind, especially just to end up dying in a specific place. But for sharks, there's nothing unusual about swimming who knows where for some not entirely clear reason. They do it all the time. Great white sharks are some of the most resilient travelers out there. They're often spotted cruising along the most extreme routes across the world ocean. Back in the early 2000s, one of these sharks swam around 12,000 miles from South Africa to Australia and back within nine months. Why? No idea. Just felt like migrating, I guess. After scientists attached a tracker to this shark, they found out it regularly embarks on journeys across oceans, and it does so very quickly. So why shouldn't other sharks swim to unexpected places with an unclear purpose? Maybe to just die. I mean, they can do that. So where's my like? See you later.